So this will be the final part of installing that uh, bow front coral reef tank. This will be the fourth trip out to the customer's location. We've got a couple of items to finish installing, such as the protein skimmer and the heater modules. We've got a few items that we need to fine tune, such as the uh, measurement or the addition of the probes for pH, conductivity, temperature, as well as ORP. Uh, I think there's probably a couple other little items that we need to fine tune, such as focusing the lights, fine tuning the uh, colors of the uh, Kessel lights. But for all intents and purposes, we should be done with the job this particular trip. We can then get the tank cycled and then begin to start building the, uh, the living coral aspect of it. So with that in mind, let's get to work. So you can see the tank has really cleared up over the course of the last week. We've obviously got the lights on in the tank, um, but uh, the water is crystal clear in there. Uh, the coral rock sculpture really looks fantastic. All the equipment that's been running on the tank seems to be running as it's supposed to. Uh, obviously we've got the returns up inside the tank where the water from the filter system is coming back. Uh, we've got the returns at the bottom, uh, three of those little uh, 45 degree elbows. Uh, there's a strainer there in the back and we've got the Tunzi pumps inside the tank. Uh, what we're going to do today is probably go ahead and uh, uh, focus and adjust the color and intensity of the lights inside the tank, uh, get all of the equipment above the tank kind of pinned down. Um, there's some equipment and such we want to uh, adjust and add on the system outside, but so far uh, things are really looking nice inside this uh, Bowfront coral reef tank. The uh, sculpture really turned out to be quite impressive. As a matter of fact, if you come around to the side, you can see just how much it um, extends forward and is quite varied in its shape, providing lots of ledges and landing zones to place different corals on. Um, so it really gives the uh, tank a uh, realistic, for sure, uh, look inside of it. And those who had some issues with uh, how we handled the live rock, the reality is the end result is a clean uh, rock that has an extremely real uh, as well as natural look to it. And even though it doesn't have much of the uh, previous life on the outside of the rock, it still harbors life on the inside of the rock. And over the course of the next few months to uh, years, you'll be surprised as to what actually uh, crawls out of the rock or grows out of the rock. So what this has formed is a uh, living sculpture inside the tank. Granted, it may not be the true sense of live rock in the sense that it has uh, an abundance of different bits of life on it. It still is live rock and it is uh, a very realistic or natural look inside the tank. So Scott has arrived and he's going to be um, working on some of the uh, stuff on the inside of the tank. One of the things that we want to do is get the protein skimmer placed in there. Uh, we need to uh, drill a couple of holes so we can finish installing the uh, uh, ATO aspects as well as uh, the dose aspects. And then he's going to create some kind of a passage um, for cables going through the uh, passage into the house so that we can patch that up or seal that up. Um, what do you think, Slick? I think the ATO is actually done, so we've got to make the uh, bulkhead fittings for the dose, uh, but ATO has been up and running. Uh, we'll run a piece of PVC pipe as a conduit for the probes and stuff, because the base unit for the apex is underneath the tank itself inside. Uh, make some templates for this, do some calibration, and uh, tighten some bolts on the reflows, because I did notice that the uh, reflows have a leak at the gasket. I'm hoping Jim brought his wrenches or sockets. Yeah. Good. Um, so just some minor touch-up stuff and we'll be good to go, but fortunately none of my plumbing has any leaks, so I'm happy about that. Yes. And uh, I'm ready to rock and roll. Cool. It's now time to unpackage and position the protein skimmer. 
although as a result of not wanting to have it running during the initial biological cycle of the tank and needing to cut or trim the lids to accommodate the protein skimmer, we may not be running it yet at this time. So we're now dealing with the heating and cooling aspects of the system. You were gonna say? I said the chiller, um, chiller come, come on at 82. So the chiller comes on at 82. The tank without any heaters runs at about 79 degrees. And we've got heaters here, but we're not gonna set them to come on until about 76. Um, so there's probably a, a six degree spread inside there, three degrees to either side of what the tank seems to wanna operate at. Um, so there's a couple of Wan Brothers controllers with a titanium heater elements that are down in the sump. And then there's a, a controller for uh, the Tradewinds brand chiller that's behind that um, white box in the bottom corner uh, that contains the chiller. Uh, I say contains because it's vented on both the front and the back so that the chiller has a positive draw from outside and a positive discharge to the outside. Um, you can see here it'll come out through that uh, vent down there. And then Scott's currently working on uh, confirming that the apex is reading uh, the temperatures as we want them. And then there's a uh, relay mechanism in here uh, that uh, gets in between the chiller and the apex so that the uh, apex doesn't have to deal with the full draw, amp draw, of the chiller. Uh, this is more of a relay that tells the apex what to do uh, or the apex tells it what to do and in turn this relay is what absorbs uh, the big amp draw which is probably 8 amps uh, from the chiller itself. So it's more like 11, 11 amps. 11 amps and it's a big half horse refrigeration unit which is really made for um, a spa application and I say spa because this particular spot here uh, on the side of the house uh, in Woodland Hills. Woodland Hills is part of the San Fernando Valley and Woodland Hills typically is one of the hottest spots in the San Fernando Valley in the summertime so um, this is also going to receive full morning sunlight although it will get shaded in the afternoon which is a benefit but still uh, it'll be uh, easily a hundred degrees plus out here so it's a much more capable uh, refrigeration unit uh, coming from the, uh, the spa uh, side of things. And so ironically, for as large as this cabinet is, which is about 96 inches long and 36 inches tall, once you get this equipment in there, there's really not an abundance of room. And we need to tighten the uh, screws on the face of the uh, two big pumps down inside there a little bit because there's a minor bit of drippage, but it's really quite, uh, it takes a contortionist to get down in there to tighten all of this stuff. So. Uh, hopefully we've made good choices on the equipment. Hey, Jim, and, uh, I need you to get in here. You have longer arms. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> well, those long arms and long legs ain't going to fit into this thing. Um, but um, those choices of equipment are high-end, so hopefully there's no issues that require us to go in there, certainly in the near future, to have to replace anything. And as Scott works on the water pumps and finishes up the various connections on the Apex system, I'm going to go ahead and clean the inside of the tank. For now, I can use my pad on a long pole, as there's not really that much algae growth. But later on, I'll need to use my stronger aquarium cleaning magnets. But for now, this allows me to become familiar with what I'll need to get involved with down the road and there's going to be areas on the sides of the tank where I can't reach with the aquarium cleaning magnets. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium and the third is myfishtank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF 
to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's MyFishTank.com. ATB protein skimmers have achieved the perfect balance of air and water to deliver a consistent, stable, and frothy foam while eliminating turbulence. Maximum air to water contact time is achieved in a relatively small chamber that would simply not be possible with a traditional design. Couple this with the consistent and tiny micro bubbles created by our AirStar pumps and you have a recipe for uncompromising performance created specifically to the professional aquarist. Our skimmers are handcrafted in Austria using solid, durable, and long-lasting materials like PVC, acrylic, and titanium. Cuts are made with the help of our precision CNC machines. Our AirStar motor blocks are joined with our proprietary volutes and needle wheel impellers. This combination has led to one of the most energy efficient, long lasting, high performance and highly sought after skimmer pumps on the market. For more information, visit ATBUSA.com. Next time you're near Long Beach, California, take the time to stop in at Age of Aquariums. 2642 Cherry Avenue, just off the 405 freeway near Signal Hill. Age of Aquariums carries a full line of dry goods, supplements, and exotic equipment. Age of Aquariums also carries a wide assortment of living corals, coral frags, as well as fresh and saltwater fish, ranging from the usual, the unusual, and the bizarre. Age of Aquariums is located at 2642 Cherry Avenue, Long Beach, California, near Signal Hill. Open seven days a week. Call 562 438-6252 or visit ageofaquariums.biz So, your cool nano reef tank is doing great! But you've got an algae problem? Consider the drop from Santa Monica filtration. Seven sizes to easily fit into the filter compartment of most nano tanks. And just like their bigger cousins, the hog and the surf, all use air bubbles and LED light technology to grow algae. Algae that consumes nutrients and that algae replaces itself at no new cost to you. For more information on Santa Monica Filtration's drop, hog, and surf algae scrubbers, visit santa-monica.cc. So now the uh, pH conductivity, the temperature, and the ORP probes are in place. Uh, we're going through tightening up and fine-tuning the, uh, the cables, the excess cableage. And uh, the ATO is all hooked up. The GFO reactor is running. The uh, heater and its uh, refrigeration unit uh, controllers are in place. Um, one of the things that Scott's done is there's a large 18 by 12 inch cutout in the back of the cabinet that goes through the wall uh, out underneath the aquarium which originally accommodated the uh, drain lines and return lines. It's also got uh, the passage for the um, cables. So at some point uh, that entire passage is going to end up being filled up with some kind of insulation or something. So we ended up uh, placing a uh, pipe inside there that will act as a conduit for allowing the cords to pass through there, and that's what we're feeding through there right now. And so again, kind of tightening up or fine-tuning or cleaning up all the excess uh, wires and making it nice and neat down inside there. And as you can, when you got this many wires, it gets kind of crazy. Yeah, and, and at this there's an awful lot of wires through here. Same time, it's hard to. Uh, uh, differentiate what's um, part of this part of that so if you bundle everything together at some point if you have to replace it and then you're cutting everything back apart so uh, it is what it is but you try to make it nice and neat and one of the things that we've incorporated into the system through the apex is a leak detector now that being the probe down there that will um, once it's officially put in place uh, will sit flatly and probably sit on top of a paper towel. Um, what's the reason for the paper towel? 
because uh, any kind of salt on the bottom of the uh, sump can be conductive. So the paper towel prevents false alarms. Okay. So there is um, that probe down there, and that'll detect if there's any moisture, or should I say water, collecting in the bottom of the cabinet as a result of a water pump that's leaking, or a sump that develops a leak, or any of the piping that develops a leak. The uh, second leak detector is here underneath the aquarium on the floor, and it happens to be right there. That will detect any moisture that would uh, happen as a result of fittings on the underside of the tank leaking or dripping. Although, obviously it has to land there near the detector or the probe itself. I think what we're going to end up doing is having a uh, drip pan made that'll sit underneath um, the tank uh, within inside the uh, metal frame of the stand so that any moisture um, that dripped would collect inside there. I'm not sure if the tank uh, or the stand manufacturer can make that from his um, template uh, that he created for uh, the drawings or if I need to create a template myself. but. Uh, That'll be part of one of the things we'll be adding to the tank. And again, that leak detector uh, will help us, uh, hopefully warn us in advance if there's any potential leaks, uh, because this is brand new hardwood floors and I don't want the water to roll out. And of course, I'd like to be notified if something is a problem in the tank. So I'd also like to take a few minutes and kind of go over the uh, the rock sculpture here in the tank. It's uh, I don't know if the camera actually truly captures just how varied, uh, dimensional, um, or definitive, um, or just really how uh, unique that it is. You can see there's some significant shelves extending outwards. Um, right here is this hand reaching out. Uh, there could be a bit of a, a skull. Uh, Condi did talk about drilling holes in it so that I could place uh, uh, coral frags, in particular maybe uh, uh, staghorn coral frags in that. Um, you can see a little further down here there's another arm reaching out into the tank. Uh, as we move further down there's a number of large flat landing zones that uh, lend themselves to uh, very interesting places to position different corals. Uh, we do have a little sandy or beachy area down here at the bottom for some bottom corals. And moving back over to this other side here, uh, again, you can see just how um, varied in its um, uh, shape uh, it actually is. And here over onto the far other side, uh, again, these that stick out, another couple of uh, large arms or branches reaching out. Uh, down here is another one. Um, it's quite varied in its uh, structure. And none of the rocks are going to inhibit me from being able to get the aquarium cleaning magnet here to the side of the tank, which is a good thing. Uh, maybe a little awkward at times to um, get in there with a pole, a pad on the long pole, but I expect to use the aquarium cleaning magnets in most of the cases. Although, as you saw earlier, there are the uh, black edges that extend back beyond the edge of the cabinet there, um, of which this tank is um, I believe 30 inches front to back here on the corner of which from here to here is 15 and then it goes another 15 inches back. So that uh, rear 15 inches is an area that I'll probably have to reach with the pole or the pad on a stick uh, to try to get in there and clean. But um, it's really, really uh, quite impressive and of course as you walk into the room it's the first thing that's going to uh, catch your eye um, and draw your attention there. Uh, I keep telling the homeowner with his brand new fancy uh, thin screen, flat screen TV that uh, the aquarium is a significant competition for uh, his mind's attention. Alright, so we've got things pretty well buttoned up. I've got everything calibrated. The probes are calibrated. The dose is calibrated. Uh, we don't have any fish in here yet. Um, we've already been uh, almost a week and a half or whatever since we set up the tank, so in the next couple weeks it will be fish, but I'm going to just go ahead and throw some fish food into the AFS, uh, even though it's shut off now. Um, at least that way when Jim does add fish, um, 
put you some food in there, ready to go. And the next thing to do will be to add our calcium and alkalinity. Now we just tested our calcium and alkalinity and, and obviously there's no uptake in the system whatsoever right now. Um, so once there is uptake in the system then our calcium and alkalinity levels will drop. But we're running at about 8.5, 8.5 um, dKH and someplace around 500 on the calcium based on his test results. It might be a little bit less than that, but uh, you're using what salt, Jim? Red Sea. Red Sea salt. So according to Red Sea, 25 PPT, our alkalinity should be around 8.2, which is right. It says calcium should be around 440. Uh, you know, it seems to be a little bit higher than that, but it's within range. So. Uh, we're not going to need any calcium or alkalinity now, but just for kicks and giggles, we're going to go ahead and at least top off our reservoir so that when the time comes, we're good to go. Um, once we start seeing some uptake, so we're going to go ahead and put our bionic calcium component in. Fill this up. We've already gone into fusion and told it that we've got this thing full. And once um, we're ready to start using the doser, we'll take a baseline reading of what our calcium and alkalinity is. Um, then we'll remeasure a week later and see how much calcium and how much alkalinity we've lost. And then we'll use some calculators to determine how much we need to add a week to keep up with the consumption. So basically what we'll do is figure out our daily consumption based on a week's use uh, or a week's worth of alkalinity and calcium drop. What are those um, diamond shaped things down inside there? Those are optical sensors to tell the system or tell you when the uh, when it's time to add solution. Put this back in its place. This is our alkalinity side so that will go into the alkalinity port there. And our calcium side go into the calcium cord. Make sure they're all the way down. And we are good. So now our dose reservoir is all filled up. Good to go. Um, we've got our GFO reactor that's running right now. We've got our, our uh, chiller and heaters all programmed. So pretty much the system is done. The next step uh, when he gets his skimmer body, a replacement skimmer body, is we'll come in, set the skimmer up, make some templates so we can get his lid modified. Because we are going to need a modified lid to accommodate the skimmer and also accommodate the uh, cutouts for his uh, algae scrubbers, which I also feel we have got his algae scrubbers in there. They're running now. Um, they're programmed to come on as the lights are turning off and they'll turn off when the lights are coming on, but if you look in here, we've got our Santa Monica Surf, and then we've also got our Santa Monica, uh, I forgot what the other one, Hog, Hog, the glass scrubber, so we've got two algae scrubbers in here. These things are nice little scrubbers, I mean, they're not, you know, like waterfall ones, uh, but they're very efficient, they take up little space, uh, shouldn't interfere with the skimmer or anything else in there, so, you know. It's a lot easier than installing one of the bigger waterfall ones. And every little bit helps. Jim's doing a lot of water changes or will maintain regular water changes on the system. So keeping nutrients in check, um, that'll be easy. And scrubbers, they'll add a little bit of extra benefit of consuming some of the excess nutrients as well. So that's pretty much about it right now. Uh, looks like I'll be back here in a week or two. Come in and set up the skimmer and make the templates for the lids. And uh, then we'll be done. And this being the filtration box, which sits outside here, um, is built with, um, what did you call that stuff? Cement board? Hardy board. Who? Hardy board. Uh, built with hardy board. Um, it's attractive, uh, and it seems to uh, contain any of the noise, so it should be uh, quite the uh, long-lasting unit to uh, hold all that filtration out here for us. It'll be nice when they get those little hydraulic arms. They're going to put some hydraulic, kind of like the things you see on your trunk. At least that's what they threatened to do. 
we'll see if they do that. But that'll make it easier to open and close. So one of the really cool things about all these high-tech aquariums that we're now installing is the ability to monitor them. Here I've got um, the screen pulled up so we're able to monitor the customer's aquarium on my laptop. We've also got the ability to monitor it on my uh, cell phone as well. So again, one of the really neat things about all this high-tech stuff is the ability to um, remotely control as well as monitor the aquarium. Here we've got a graph here for the dose, the um, Neptune Systems dose, which will be dispensing the calcium and alkalinity. Got the ability to monitor the salt level, the ORP, uh, the uh, pH, as well as the temperature in the tank. And then down here I've got a number of tiles that allow me to turn various components on and off, such as the lights, the protein skimmers, the Tunzi pumps, the algal turf scrubbers, etc. And then we've also got a few other things on here, alerts or alarms, uh, things such as the water level too low in the sump or the water level too high in the sump, as well as a um, salt level too low. We're able to monitor all of those things. And then we've also got leak detectors on the tank. Uh, there's a, a probe underneath the tank in case any of the bulkheads would start leaking. We don't want to ruin the customer's floors. And we've also got a probe in the um, filter area outside the house that would notify us if water was sitting inside the cabinet there. Uh, we've also got the ability to monitor amp draw as well as a number of other items, uh, the heaters, uh, the uh, lights for the algae scrubbers, the lights for the tank, etc. So that's one of the really cool things about all of this high-tech stuff via Neptune Systems, Apex, and their software program called Fusion. So it appears as though we're finally done. This has been one of the most complex jobs I've ever done not only coordination wise but timing wise and of course a few little bumps in the road that we ran into kind of made things a little bit more complex but the end result is an extremely impressive aquarium that I really think that the word that best describes this is immersed as you stand next to the tank not only does the bow front kind of magnify things a little bit but its height and its width also tend to make you feel as though you're inside of it, that you are literally immersed in the reef itself. Uh, any comments, any thoughts? I'm, I'm just uh, really, really impressed. You know, I it's, it's, uh, haven't had a chance to see it with lights on, um, the water all clear, and as Jim said, it's just very immersive, and the bow front really tends to make things look a lot bigger, uh, perhaps than they are. I mean, it's really hard to tell, but obviously I'm not that big of a guy, and this tank is huge. Uh, so I, I can simply say that I am nothing short of impressed. The last two tanks that we did, the, um, uh, the what I call the 500 Reef um, and then the cylinder tank, if we can accomplish what we did in those tanks, in this tank, fish-wise and coral-wise, it'll be literally a piece of the reef in this person's home. So, uh, looking forward to maybe some videos down the road, certainly myself looking forward to stocking the tank. It'll be an interesting experience learning to service the tank. Um, but, with all of that said, as always, keep moving forward.